Hello and welcome to a uh, advanced SPIOS tip. Um, my name is Chris Kennedy. I'm an application engineer at Optus North America, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the an alternative use, usage for uh, the SPIOS component. So here you can see I've created a sort of basic staging scene. So just as a sort of test, um, we've got a got a radiance detector, um, 720 by 480 resolution. Um, and here's what it would see. And then we've also got a uniform source. Uh, and just to sort of test things out, we're gonna go ahead and run an inverse simulation for 10 minutes just to see what it should look like. Um, so there we go. Uh, so you've got some materials applied. Um, so it looks pretty decent. Um, and it takes about a minute to initialize, um, 10 minutes to simulate, um, and with a total duration of 11 minutes and 57 seconds. Uh, and we've produced no errors, so, so that's also kind of important for later. Um, but what if instead of our uniform source, we wanted to illuminate it with some sort of different modules? So I've gone ahead and added in five different what I'll call micro modules into the scene, and we've got um, one that's illuminating the letters, um, so that one's right here. We've got one that's directly illuminating the logo, one that's illuminating the left wall, one that's illuminating the corner, and one that's illuminating the back wall. Um, so what do those micro modules actually look like? Well, let's go ahead and have a look. So you can see we've got um, a near field lens array on the bottom, six LEDs, um, three of them in this cross section right now, um, and then quite a complex lens on the top, and, and then sort of a basic housing just to make sure no light's escaping. Um, you can see I've created a geometry group with all three of these here. And I'll, I'll just use that for grouping for later. It's just for convenience. Um, surface one is the housing here. And then I've created a super fine mesh here. So um, this is uh, too detailed to actually preview without taking a few minutes right now. So we'll go ahead and skip it. But um, and we've also created some geometry, some some source groups. So we've got red, green, and blue. And uh, each one of those groups is actually uh, grouping together the different colors for each of the individual LEDs at a component level. So um, if we were to have a look at the LED on its own, we can see there's a red, green, and blue. So let's go ahead and have a look at what our simulation looks like. Um, you might expect with a super dense mesh and um, all these things going on, it's going to take a few minutes. So we ran another 10 minute simulation just as a test and um, it doesn't look very good. It's very um, sort of grainy. And uh, you can see it took about three minutes to initialize um, both the system and the simulation initialization. And um, 16 minutes total with that 10 minutes of simulation time. And it only managed to run about 120,000 rays, but it's got 0.59% error. So, so not too bad, um, could give us an idea. But I mean, if we're completely done with our design process, um, for the module itself, and we're really just worried about positioning, we could take a slightly different approach. So uh, you may or may not have ever used these icons before, but these are the Speos component import and um, export. Uh, so that was the export, and this one is the import definition. Um, so I've gone ahead and set these up. These do take a few minutes the first time that you run them, but you see I've got my um, geometry group, my source group added here, um, and then I've got my um, uh, you have to update that one and run it, and then you get an SP5 file that you can put into the import group, and that creates a sort of basic mesh outline for the whole scenario here. And, and I've gone ahead and regrouped the sources again, because those do get separated out um, when you export it and import it, um, so just so that everything is the same. And uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the uh, final example here. So you can see that the uh, simulation is quite a bit clearer. Um, and let's just make sure that I set everything up equally. So you can see the initialization time, much quicker. Um, but the simulation time is identical. And uh, we're running quite a few more rays here. Um, at the same time as having about the same error percent. So basically, everything is sort of equivalent except that with the export and import functionality, um, we actually uh, get quite a bit more efficiency. So let's just compare those ray counts. So we've got about, oh, it looks like 17 uh, million rays here versus something like uh, 120,000. 
So just to recap, um, Spivs component um, is created for secure communication between suppliers and manufacturers. Um, it creates an encrypted mesh of geometries and it can include source information. Um, and then uh, since it creates the mesh, it can also be used to skip the initialization of geometry, which can be useful for dense meshes. Um, and you know, just one note about that is that it'll no longer be parametric, so it should only be used late in the design phase after the base model is set. Um, but in combination with geometry and source groups in Spayos, Spayos component export and import can be used as a tool to improve your workflow.